good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, wherever you are in this world. God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we're going to finish the book of Baruch, and we are in the Complete Apocrypha. And I'm going to be reading chapter 5, which is very short, and then chapter 6. Now I want you to pay attention in chapter 6, because it's talking about false idols in Babylon, and God's warning this people, don't be afraid of these things, <laughs> they can't do anything, so, um, and, and so, take from that the message that don't have any false idols before yourself, all right, chapter five, put off, O Jerusalem, the garment of your mourning and affliction, and put on the beauty of the glory that comes from God forever. Cast about you the robe of the righteousness which comes from God. Set a diadem on your head of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your brightness to every region under heaven. For your name will be called of God forever the peace of righteousness and the glory of godliness. Arise, O Jerusalem, and stand upon the height and look about you toward the east. And behold, your children gathered from the going down of the sun to the rising thereof at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went from you on foot, being led away of their enemies. But God brings them in to you, borne on high with glory, as on a royal throne. For God has appointed that every high mountain and the everlasting hills should be made low and the valleys filled up to make plain the ground, that Israel may go safely in the glory of God. Moreover, the woods and every sweet-smelling tree have overshadowed Israel by the commandment of God. For God will lead Israel with the joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that comes from him. Chapter 6 A copy of a letter which Jeremiah the prophet sent to them which were to be led captives into Babylon by the king of the Babylonians to certify them as it was commanded him of God. Because of the sins which you have committed before God, you will be led away captives to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Babylonians. So when you come to Babylon, you will remain there many years and for a long season, even for seven generations. And after that, I will bring you out peaceably from there. But now you will see in Babylon gods of silver and of gold and of wood, borne upon shoulders, which cause the nations to fear. They have to be carried around. These gods have to be carried around. Beware, therefore, that you in no wise become like the strangers. Neither let fear take hold upon you because of them. When you see the multitude before them and behind them, worshiping them. But say you in your hearts, O Lord, we must worship you. For my angel is with you, and I myself do care for your souls. For their tongue is polished by the workmen. And they themselves are overlaid with gold and with silver. Yet are they but false and can't speak. And taking gold as it were for a virgin that loves to be happy, they make crowns for the heads of their gods. And sometimes also the priests convey from their gods gold and silver and bestow it upon themselves. And will even give thereof to the common prostitutes. And they deck them with as and they deck them as men with garments, even the gods of silver and gods of gold and of wood. They dress them up. Yet can't these gods save themselves from rust and moths, though they be covered with purple raiment? They wipe their faces because of the dust of the temple, which is thick upon them. And he that can't be put to death, one that offends against him, holds a scepter as though he were judge of a country. He has also a dagger in his right hand and an axe, but can't deliver himself from war and robbers, whereby they are known not to be gods, therefore fear them not. 
for like as a vessel that a man uses is nothing worth when it is broken. Even so, it is with their gods. When they be set up in the temples, their eyes be full of dust through the feet of those that come in. And as the courts are made sure on every side upon him that offends the king, as being committed to suffer death, even so the priests make fast their temples with doors, with locks and bars, lest they be carried off by robbers. They have to lock them up at night. Uh, they light the candles, yes, more than for themselves, whereof they can't see one. They are as one of the beams of the temple, and men say their hearts are eaten out when things creeping out of the earth devour both them and their raiment, termites. They feel it not when their faces are blackened through the smoke that comes out of the temple. Bats, swallows, and birds land on their bodies and heads, and in like manner the cats also, whereby you may know that they are no gods. Therefore, fear them not, notwithstanding the goal with which they are beset to make them beautiful, except one wipe off the rust, they will not shine, for not even when they were molten did they feel it. Things wherein there is no breath are bought at a, are bought at any cost. Having no feet, they are borne upon shoulders, whereby they declare to the men that they be nothing worth. They also that serve them are ashamed, for if they fall to the ground at any time, they can't rise up again of themselves. Neither, if they are bowed down, can they make themselves straight. But the offerings are set before them as if they were dead men. And the things that are sacrificed to them, their priests sell and spend. And in like manner their wives also lay up part thereof in salt. But to the poor and to the impotent, they give nothing thereof. The menstruous woman and the woman in childbed touch their sacrifices, knowing therefore by these things they are no gods, fear them not. For how can they be called gods? Because women set meat before the gods of silver, gold, and wood. And in their temples the priests sit on seats, having their clothes torn, and their heads and beards shaven, and nothing upon their heads. They roar and cry before their gods, as men do at the feast when one is dead. The priests also take off garments from them and clothe their wives and children withal. Whether it be evil that one does to them, or good, they are not able to recompense it. They can neither set up a king nor put him down. In like manner, they can neither give riches nor money, though a man makes a vow to them and keep it not, they will never exact it. They can save no man from death, neither deliver the weak from the mighty. They can't restore a blind man to his sight, nor deliver any that is in distress. They can show no mercy to the widow, nor do good to the fatherless. They are like the stones that be hewn out of the mountain. These gods of wood that are overlaid with gold and with silver, those who minister to them will be confounded. How should a man then think or say that they be gods, when even the Chaldeans themselves dishonor them? Who, if they see one mute that can't speak, they bring him and entreat him to call upon Baal, as though he were able to understand. Yet they can't perceive this themselves and forsake them, for they have no understanding." The women also with cords about them sit in the ways, burning bran for incense. But if any of them, drawn by some that passes by, lie with him, she reproaches her fellow that she was not thought as worthy as herself, nor her cord broken. Whatsoever is done among them is false. 
How should a man then think or say that they are gods? They are fashioned by carpenters and goldsmiths. They can be nothing else than the workmen will have them to be. And they themselves that fashioned them can never continue long. How then should the things that are fashioned by them? For they have left lies and reproaches to those who come after. For when there comes any war or plague upon them, the priests consult with themselves, where they may be hidden with them. How then can't men understand that they be no gods, which can neither save themselves from war nor from plague? Foreseeing they will be but, but of wood, and overlaid with gold and with silver, it will be known hereafter that they are false, and it will be manifest to all nations and kings that they are no gods, but the works of men's hands, and that there is no work of God in them. Who then may not know that they are no gods? For neither can they set up a king in a land, nor give rain to men. Neither can they judge their own cause, nor redress a wrong, being unable. For they are as crows between heaven and earth. For even when fire falls upon the house of gods of wood, or overlaid with gold or with silver, their priests will flee away and escape but they themselves will be burned apart like beams. Moreover, they can't withstand any king or enemies. How should a man then allow or think that they be gods? Neither are those gods of wood, and overlaid with silver and with gold, able to escape either from thieves or robbers, whose gold and silver and garments with which they are clothed, they that are strong will take from them and go away with all. Neither will they be able to help themselves. Therefore it is better to be a king that shows his manhood, or else a vessel in a house profitable, for that whereof the owner will, will have need, than such false gods, or even a door in a house to keep the things safe that are therein, than such false gods, or a pillar of wood in a palace, than such false gods." For sun and moon and stars, being bright and sent to do their offices, are obedient. Likewise also the lightning, when it glitters, is fair to see. And after the same manner the wind also blows in every country. And when God commands the clouds to go over the whole world, they do as they are told. And the fire sent from above to consume mountains and woods does as it is commanded. But these are to be likened to them neither in show nor power. Why a man should either think nor say that they are gods, seeing they are able neither to judge causes nor to do good to men, knowing therefore that they are no gods, fear them not. For they can neither curse nor bless kings, neither can they show signs in the heavens above the nations, nor shine as the sun, nor give light as the moon. The beasts are better than they, for they can get under a covert and help themselves. In no wise then is it manifest to us that they are gods. Therefore fear them not. For as a scarecrow in a garden of cucumbers that keeps nothing, so are their gods of wood and overlaid with gold and with silver. Likewise also, their gods of wood, and overlaid with gold and with silver, are like to a white thorn in an orchard that every bird sits upon, as also to a dead body that is cast out into the dark. And you will know them to be no gods by the bright purple that rots upon them, and they themselves afterward will be consumed and will be a reproach in the country. Better, therefore, is the just man that has none idols for he will be far from reproach. <sighs> Folks, that is, if you listened carefully, God saying they are everything he is not. Did I say that wrong? I think I said that wrong. That they are nothing. They can't do anything like God can do. 
they're nothing. They're just a piece of wood that somebody carved out and overlaid with gold and silver. They have to be dusted. They have to be carried around. They can't save anybody. They have to be locked up so they aren't carried off. If somebody makes a vow to them, they can't collect it. God can. God can set up kings and take them down. He sends the rain. Everything here that God is saying these gods can't do, he can. And that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> and as always, I love you.